Why do you make costumes? Is it for enjoyment or does it fill some sort of need? Yeah, it's, I'd say it's enjoyment and need. I'm just, what I'm doing is blowing off creative steam. Uh, I have a, uh, a factory job I've had for many years and uh, you get it's kind of repetitive. You're doing the same thing constantly and uh, it's kind of a uh, an escape to be able to you come up with other stuff while you're doing your job and I take notes on the side. Um, you know, I get an idea for a costume. I, I scribble it down and then later on when I find the time I can get down to the basement and uh, uh, put it to use. If you can, please describe your philosophy of costuming, like where your ideas come from, for instance. Uh, where they come from? Uh, you mean my inspiration? or uh, I kind of got my, uh, my first big inspiration into building my costumes. I say building, okay, I don't sew, I cheat, I use a hot glue gun and I sculpt. But uh, back in 1978, uh, reading the Sunday paper, the Detroit Free Press, there was an article uh, with Jim Henson, creator of the Muppets. And in the article they asked him, Jim, how do you make the Muppets? And he said, we sculpt them from foam rubber and cover them with a terry cloth pattern. And then they asked him, who operates the Muppets? And they, I was still stuck on the first question. You know, like, ah, oh, carving foam rubber, what a great idea. And I happened to have a uh, foam rubber mattress in the basement we were getting ready to throw away. So I went downstairs and I experimented with it. I found uh, a few things that would uh, sculpt the foam nicely and uh, a few things that wouldn't. But uh, I got working with that, just with that sentence, just with what Jim said about how they make the Muppets, I took it and ran with it. And I started making costumes for my kids. Later when I found out there was adult costume contests uh, available at Halloween and that, I started making costumes for my wife and I. We were going out and entering costume contests. Uh, it was uh, a hobby. It was, uh, got me off the streets, basically, or got me out from in front of the television, I should say. And uh, gave a lot of people pleasure. And, uh, uh, a lot of people enjoyed them at the uh, contests, the, the uh, gatherings we go to, the science fiction conventions, uh, uh, Mardi Gras parties, places like that. Uh, and uh, they were a uh, big hit. How do you decide what materials a particular project will require? Oh boy, I use just about everything I can get my hands on. Uh, everything from uh, trash I find at the, at the shop, <laughs> uh, different uh, materials like, well, for, for instance, now, nowadays, uh, the factory I'm working at, we get these little round adhesive rubber dots that I have to push out of these uh, black rubber gaskets that I have to put into valves in the building. So I have to clear out all these dots first. So normally you throw them away, I save them. And then when I'm building uh, puppets or uh, masks, things like that, I take the backing off and push them onto a styrofoam ball and mount them into the uh, heads of the uh, puppets. Uh, I've got pupils, self-adhesive pupils. Uh, there's a lot of other things that I find, uh, yard sales. I find uh, toys, for instance. People are throwing away toys that are broken or something, and I'll get them for a quarter, and I'll take them apart and take the, uh, the mechanism that moves the arms or something, or the blinking eyes from uh, toy monster or something like that, remove it, and then it winds up in my stuff. I just I cannibalize things. What influences determine where you'll be showing a costume? Uh, or used to be uh, uh, prizes. 
I'd be going after prize money. We shop the uh, uh, entertainment papers to see uh, who was having a Halloween party and what they were uh, awarding as a prize. And uh, we'd go to those parties and try to win money and supplement our income. How much time do you take in constructing a costume for a particular event? Uh, well, um, the last time I built a costume was about well, three years ago. And it was because I was, um, I was very impressed with a, a television show that's on uh, the Cartoon Network late at night called Robot Chicken. Are you familiar with that show? Okay, it's, they uh, take action figures. It's kind of childish. I used to do this when I was a kid with my Fox 8 millimeter movie camera. They take action figures like G.I. Joe's and uh, things like that and they animate them on the show and they play little scenarios out that are extremely funny. And they animate the eyes and the mouths on them and that and uh, they're, they're absolutely hilarious. It's on way too late for me to stay up and watch because of the time I have to get go to work. But I would uh, record them and watch them when I get home from work. And uh, I thought it would be terrific fun to make uh, a costume of the mad scientist at the beginning of the show who puts the chicken together. And the chicken, too. So I've done that. Uh, I've made it's the head, uh, the big... Uh, mad scientist with the wild hair sticking out in all directions and I, I uh, got um, some lab coats at the flea market that they used, used work clothes. I got a bag of <laughs> a bag of lab coats for 10 bucks <laughs> and I, I butchered them all up and made one large size uh, mad scientist lab coat with a big flap in the front and big round plastic buttons going down the sides and it's all velcroed down. And um, then uh, the chicken is made out of uh, carpet padding, uh, foam rubber, uh, one inch carpet padding, which uh, I have my right hand inside of. And I can turn the head around so the chicken is looking around, he's got a blinking eye, he's got that uh, little reactor in his stomach with uh, lights blinking and throbbing and that. And, uh, I've gone a step further. Uh, I've rigged it up so that he can blow smoke out of his beak. So I can have him just, I can go into a room and hold him up and go like, it's alive! And then shoot uh, smoke all over the place and everybody, you know, cheers. They love it. It's a big crowd pleaser. I just recently went to uh, Yumacon, <coughs> downtown Detroit at the uh, Rensen. And I roamed around down there for a couple of days, just walking around in the, um, out in the hallways and uh, the, uh, uh, the hotel area and the uh, dealer's room and every place. I'd just walk around and people were stopping me every foot, pose for pictures. You know, we want to take a picture with you. So I didn't get any place very fast. But I, I, I got a lot of pictures floating around out there on, on YouTube, I'm sure. Is being faithful to source material a concern for you, or do you concentrate mostly on your own designs? Uh, usually, I concentrate on my own stuff. I, I come up with, I try to come up with original stuff. Uh, like uh, Robot Chicken is a, that's an odd one. Okay, I, I, I did that one because I liked the character, and I thought I could do a faithful reproduction of it, uh, which I. Everybody seems to agree that I did. In fact, I've even had it signed. Uh, they signed the butt of the chicken. Uh, <laughs> um, what's his name? Um, uh, Seth Green and uh, the other guy signed the bottom of the chicken for me at a convention. They were thrilled to death with it. But uh, most of the costumes that I've made over the years, from the 70s and on, have been, uh, except for the ones for the kids. The kids wanted things like, oh, we want to be Garfield. Okay, I make Garfield. But the stuff for my wife and I, I always try to come up with original stuff. I try to, I don't take it seriously. Uh, I try to make it funny. I always have some kind of a funny uh, um, addition to the costume where it's somewhat comical. 
Uh, it's impressive, but it's got comic relief involved. Okay. For any particular design, how does the comfort of the person wearing it figure in? Uh, <laughs> I, I, I do tend to go overboard with that. Uh, for instance, um, my major costume that I use now, uh, uh, Oscar the Ogre, which is uh, I use on the Wolfman Max show. I'm a character on the show. Uh, I've had the costume for years before the show even started, though, but I just added it to the show. Um, I have uh, all the all the masks I make for adults. I, I put a fan in them, so I, I have a little fan right between the eyes, blowing in my face. Keeps me alive, literally when we're uh, doing a costume contest or something. Uh, often it's cooler inside of the mask than it is when I take the mask off and I feel how hot the room is. Uh, it helps a lot. And then another thing is um, most of my costumes have got foam rubber over the entire body, uh, or most of the body. We're talking like not just the head, but the arms, the back, the chest, the legs, everything. So you're a bit over-insulated. So what I do is I, uh, I run a, a really inexpensive way to get a drink without taking the mask off every time and taking a cup of water or something. I, have, I got a vinyl tube and ran it uh, from inside of my mask, right in front of my mouth. I have it mounted up there. I run it down through the neck. I call it a mork finger. I don't know if you remember. Uh, uh, Mark and Mindy, that he could drink through his finger, mm -hmm. supposedly. Well, I really can. <laughs> my, I go to the bar at the party and I say, can I have a, a glass of water with no ice or no straw? And they say, well, I guess you're going to have to take your head off now, aren't you? And I put it down in the bar, put my finger in it, and start drinking. And everybody freaks out. Hey! He's drinking! Did you say, hey, come here, look at this! Oh, hey, drink some more! Look at this! Whoa! And, and it's kind of a, 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 an attraction for the costume. It gets people to talk to us. And uh, people always say, well, where did you rent that? Where did you buy that? And then it gives us a chance to explain, well, they're homemade. Uh, we didn't rent it. We didn't buy it. Where would you buy it? Have you ever seen anything like this in a store? Never. No, you're probably wearing the best thing they had in the store. You know, and that's, that was 39 bucks, and you bought it in a bag down at uh, Spirit Halloween or something. Um, and then also on my wrist, I have a, a, a dollar store wallet uh, underneath the fur, and I can pull the fur back. I have Velcro on it, and I have a photo album, a little a wallet photo album in there. I can flip over the pages on and show them pictures of where I was making the costume where the mask was being glued together and painted and everything. And then they all crowd around and they're looking at that going, well, I guess he really did make it. And that helps uh, actually in a crowd. If they, they, they usually spread the word around. Say, hey, he made that. No way. Yes, he did. I saw the pictures. So it, it helps. Do you find that color is an influence in your work? Uh, if so, in what way? Color, um, yeah. I try to use whatever I've got the most on hand with the spray paint. Uh, it's gotten more spray paints expensive. <laughs> I usually used to get it at the dollar store or get it for a buck a can at uh, ACO. I'm usually working with spare change, putting these costumes together. I don't have much money. Uh, find the foam rubber usually on the curb. Somebody's thrown out a couch or something, I'll grab it. Um, uh, the other things, the most expensive part of taking a costume out to do a party uh, is to buy the batteries I need. Uh -huh.